So for our meeting today on Wednesday, you guys expressed interest in shaping. Is this everyone's very first time touching foam and trying to create a climbing hold? Kind of. Kind what's, of. what's kind of mean? I found a piece of scrap, a couple pieces of scrap, and made a thing. So you, you, <laughs> you made a thing out of some scrap. OK. So he has a slight head start, but that doesn't, we'll, we'll see if it's going to give him any edge thing. against <laughs> you guys. And so this is just building off of the 101 video that we shot, that we put out there just to give people like a start. And so in that video, what's kind of the big takeaway of how to get started into your journey of shaping? should try to see what if you can replicate a pre-existing shape because if you can't do that then you can't put any of your ideas into um. yep so exactly so the big idea is that you a really good starting place is just to try to replicate a shape and by doing that you'll be able to take ideas out of your brain and put it into foam because as you look at like sculpture is like a medium it's like the artist walks up it's like oh i see a climbing hold in here and then boom the climbing hold appears but it's there's a lot more that's going on to it it's really that they already have that skill set to be a, in their brain they actually saw this and then they know how to carve that out of the foam and that's really what's happening and so if you can see this in person and then put it into foam then you're going to be like that much closer to having that idea in your brain. I mean, like, boom, it's going to magically appear, and then you can act like it's magic, and you have this, this gift. So with that said, we have five of the wafers out here. Again, one of the most simple holds. Brendan's cheating. Here, I've got the simplest one. This one's in cut, so this is going to be the hardest one, OK? It's going to be a little bit more challenging, but not that much. This is a sloper. That one's going to be um, fairly easy. And so the first thing, I already cut your blocks of foam. And I'm just going to run through this verbally for you guys. And then I'm going to let you guys run at it. And so first thing you're going to do is you need to level your foam. OK? And then after you level your foam, there is enough. Let me grab two of these. You guys got to find a partner because there should be enough. We want to be a steward of our foam. And there should be enough to get two shapes in some of these. I literally laid it out and it actually worked. Okay. And so play around some like the big and small ones and you guys should be able to get two and then you can, there's some Sharpies right behind us and then you can line those out. Rita, can you grab those, those Sharpies? So don't get marker on our climbing holds. <laughs> There you go, Chris. Just like outline it. Yep, so just outline it. And this is the process. So let's say we're already moved beyond replicating a hold and you have an idea. Is that idea is in your head, and the first thing I would do is I cut the block of the height of what you want, and then I'm just gonna draw on the foam like the rough shape. And so that's exactly what you guys are doing there. Trace it all the way out. Oh, trace it all the way out. All the way out. Just like, uh, yep. Okay. And again, you can level really at any point here. So maybe right now um, you can cut that in half. And so you're going to grab the drywall saw. You can splice yours in half so that your friend can have a... No, just cut it right in half. Okay. And so once you have your block of foam, now go level it. So there's this. Walk over to a sander, wherever you need to go. Um, walk outside, scrape it on the concrete. Whatever you need to do, go ahead and level the, the base of your foam.
All right, so at this point we have our piece of foam. It's the right height because I already cut it roughly to the height that we need. So I already gave you a head start there. It's leveled and we have it lined out the very general shape, okay? And so everyone grab their drywall knife. Everyone has their knives. You're like ready to draw. And at this point, so I saw some of you cutting like this. Um, it's not, um, try to come straight down and you'll be able to cut these contours that way. You know, think about like how a bandsaw works. And so at this point, I want all of us to get the same point, just cut out the rough shape. Chris is already way ahead of us. And just cut out your rough shape. get rid of that that edge that's part of the manufactured foam and it's really hard like you can't work with that at all so that needs to disappear can exist on there make sure that's that's long gone all right so i misled you guys a little bit i'm like hey work vertically but i'm seeing it's making you a lot slower so when you're doing a curve surface like that you're going to have to work vertically but you can go pretty fast like when you're on the side like that you know to knock that stuff down and so if you do this enough you'll start to get really comfortable with this tool at this point so now thinking like we're the the crazy artists and we're like we're imagining our hold in this block of foam we pretty much just got rid of a lot of the waste and now you can actually start to see the shape and so this is the first point it's like all right, here's, here's Sean's shape. You know, you can start to see it coming in, like the rough ideas there. From this point, so one thing that makes the wafers distinct, if you look at, um, you kind of break this down into a shape. And so right now, is this hold, what is the contour of this? Is it flat and then it comes down hard on the sides? Is it just this like bowing arc? Like what, what do you guys notice? There's a short flat, flat section about here where the bolt surface is. Okay, so on this one we might have a flat section that might be about three inches long here, and then it's tapering down. If you look at this hold, as I'm looking at, there is no flat section. There might be a high spot over here, and that's tapering down, and so the high spot is off center. If you look at Chris's hold, Chris, break your hole down. What are you looking for? What are you going to put into the foam? Um, this one looks like it's just a nice curve overall. There's not really a flat spot by the bolt. It's just a nice consistent curve that tapers down to either side of the hold. Yep, yep. And on this ink cut, we actually have a pretty long flat spot. In general, if you study the wafers, as a generality, they're going to curve and taper the entire time. Some of them might have a flat spot, but it's going to be pretty subtle. And, and that's part of the nature of the wafers. And so we're only looking at one profile there, right? So we're just looking at it straight on from the grip surface, and we're going to taper our ends. And so with that in mind, if, if this is my flat one, if, so if this is flat and then just tapers on the sides, if that's the case, I'm just going to come down and I'm just going to taper my sides, right? And then I tapered my sides in a rough sense, and that's kind of the nature of this hold. Where Chris is, is bowing the entire way, so I'm going to start there. I'm just going to taper my sides, and then I'm going to knock off a little bit more. I'm going to knock off a little bit more, and I'm just going to keep working this back and forth. And so now from the middle down, I've essentially tapered it all the way. And so I'm just working just this one aspect of tapering my sides okay so why don't you guys take your hold and replicate that aspect of it so 
again, Marta. Just come here and just knock that edge off first before you get into the middle. can pause at that point even if you're not completely there and so you really have this is just you can be pretty rough at this point so Brendan got a little aggressive on the edge remember this is foam so it's really fragile so he snapped off like the the whole like inch and a half so he's gonna have a very like a much skinnier wafer at this point and so you have to be really careful with that this is foam it's fragile so you have to understand not to break with your saw and to cut all the way through, especially when you're getting down to your the tips of the foam. Uh, I'm looking, I think in general, we're there. So one thing I saw is you guys are trying to create that curve. Is some of you guys try to cut that curve right off the bat. And what happens is you can start to get these big dips up here in the middle section. So just knock those tails off and then just work it, just kind of feather it all the way back. And that's the fastest and the smoothest way so we don't get this like big contour in here. Um, that's, that's how you ensure that you're not gonna make a mistake as you're, as you're working that, that hump, okay? So at this point, now we have the general outline of our hold in that sense, and then we've curved it over. What's, what do you guys think is the next step? The back end. Yep, that profile from the grip surface, tapering it down to the wall, okay? And so same thing, take your hold. Is there a flat spot on the top or from where your fingers are touching the grip surface, from that point, does it taper almost directly down to the wall? Is there like a hump and then it tapers fast? Really think about that curve um, and study your hold a little bit because about four of yours are the same and one of them's gonna look a little different. All right, so at that point, I'll do it first. You guys can watch me. Don't come, I mean, you could come across like this. One of the easier ways is to knock this edge off. And I'm looking at my tip, and I want that tip to come out pretty close to the wood. So I, I left myself about a half inch. Now I'm close, and then that's it, okay? And now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna work that edge over here. Then I'm gonna work this edge. Now I have this big flat spot and that's, you know, that has nothing to do with like the aesthetic of a wafer. And so I'm just gonna slowly start knocking this back. I'm not just gonna try to go for it. I'm just gonna kind of keep running this until I start to get that curve that I want. And right now I'm I humped, so I just gotta keep removing material until I'm running a line pretty much from the script surface down to the wall. And keep in mind, like the wafers are really low profile and naturally when you start carving you're going to see that your hold's going to want to do this and it's going to kind of want to hump down hard and just keep removing material until you have that nice the nice profile so go for it This is what Santa's workshop sounds like.
And you don't want to overwork it with the saw because we're going to be getting into sanding here pretty soon. You're going to lose all your material if you keep working it with the saw. So you guys roughed it out to this point, and this isn't so much about just replicating a hold as I think you're starting to understand that you're starting to see and understand different things about the climbing hold that you just kind of take for granted as you're trying to do this. And you're really, you do this enough and you'll start to understand the essence of the hold and how it tapers and how it feels, and then you'll be able to start to recreate the essence when you're working with foam and putting it into you know that new shape. All right, so let's uh, let's start with Chris at this point. Chris has kept it nice and flat. I'm looking at his profiles, and as far as roughing out, I think um, you're seeing it really well. This wafer actually has what I would call a defect in there, and it, like it does this weird dip in there. So don't replicate that. Um, so I think you're doing a really, that one's looking really good. Again, Brendan lost his edge. Up here, he got a little aggressive. Um, what do you guys see? What is wrong about the bottom of this hold? Okay. What's his line doing on the bottom of this hold? Curves back to that. So, yep, so this curves back up. And those types of decisions make they make a difference as far as if this is vertical and what type of a hold that's going to be if you're going to try to step on this. And it's really understanding that was unintentional, you know, but when you're shaping, you want to have all that control that you're intentionally like shaping that kind of stuff. And so if these accidents happen, like, yeah, you can be like the crazy artist and like accidents happen. That's sometimes how you make great shapes or great art. And that's, that's fine. But for this process, you're trying to, the, the opposite happens is if you have this idea and if you can't put it in foam, that's a problem. So if you can't look at this and you can't replicate it, again, it's going to be really hard to take that, that concept, which might be a really precise concept in some area. And if you can't work that into the foam, like, that's a problem because then you have this genius idea that no one ever gets to climb on. And so understanding that part. Um, this also comes to a really sharp point and you're really fat up here. Okay, so as you look at that, um, I would have just done a smaller version of this and really create the essence of this that is kind of fat and it comes up to a point and that it doesn't curve in. It starts at a point and comes out and then humps around. And so just create a smaller version of this and like look at that shape. All right. So let's see here. Um, at this point, this is a much taller one. You'll be able to remove that. So I would get the saw back out and knock this down because you have quite a bit of material to remove. And this is our high point up here and then we're working down. And you're, you're in that, that direction, but I think you have a little bit more work on the saw before you go into sandpaper. Let's look at Marta's. Um, same thing. And so this one starts high and it really slopes down here at the end where Marta is really coming flat and then coming down kind of hard. And what that does is one, it's going to be feel completely different. And so right now, if I'm climbing on this, my palm sits really hard on this radius where that's the one thing on the wafers is actually, if I'm pulling down, my palm doesn't even touch anything because of the, the slant. Or if I'm pulling straight down, I can actually feel the hold all the way through here. And that's something unique because of the taper on the wafers is you actually really don't feel anything in the palm to paint on the angle of the wall. And so this doesn't quite have the essence of a wafer. And that's getting into like the subtleties of that slope. And that's one thing that makes the wafers a little unique. Um, because this is a really common hold that's kind of like domed and it comes down pretty hard on the ends. And that's not what the wafers do in their series. And they climb different. It's going to be different as a foothold, you know, as you flip these around and how you can step on here, because this is all textured. So you can actually 
you can get like some pretty good smearing um, and footholds. And the humpier this is, like the bigger it domes, the better foot that is, okay? So you have, we got quite a bit of material to remove there. If we look at, um, Sean, what do you guys see right off the bat? What are we looking at? Eh, I won't worry about the material. They're not that far off. What do you see? Okay, so Sean is perfectly flat on the top. And again, it's kind of like Marta's. And this, and in one sense, he saw that this area right here is really flat, but it's not flat parallel to the ground. It's a flat surface angling down to the wall. And so this flat surface is fine, but it should actually be flat angling and then it dips to the wall. And so right here, you kind of see it break. And so we're flat and then it kind of breaks, but this whole, um, plateau essentially is on a slope down towards the wall and so we're still um, looking at your sides I think you're fine on material don't worry about that too much especially since this is a jug is you always want more material so I think it's really good that you left this much material we just have to work this whole back profile over here and again on the jug if you're cranking down on here I'm actually not feeling the wafer at all in my hand. And if you're pulling down on here, I can feel the texture all the way to about this point in my hand. So that said, a couple of you guys have more to do with your saw, like that I pointed out. Um, after you get done with that part, you're moving into sanding. And in my other video, I didn't talk about this block of foam so this is still foam and this is a nice tool for let me look Chris yours would work um, Brendan your grip surface is almost completely flat and if you use this soft sponge if you're putting too much pressure you can actually create dips and divots and with this this is going to hold really flat and you can actually really create like a nice plane where it's harder to do that with the medium with the medium sponge. And so I would recommend this if you have a really flat um, crimp or a ledge that you're creating. All right, and then a few of us have climbing holds that slope in and they're not gonna be completely uniform and that's when you really wanna use the medium sponge pad as far as the grip surface. But everyone, don't, don't use this on the backside of your holds because that's gonna create all these like flat spots and you really want this to curve nice and smooth. And so I'm just gonna take my medium. Circular motions work pretty nice. And it might look like I'm just kind of randomly running this around, but I'm really looking at the hold. And if it feels hot here, I'm spending more time there. And so it, it doesn't, I'm just not randomly running my hand around. I'm looking a lot at what I'm trying to create as far as that contour and that slope. I'm spending a lot of time down here. And I, I'm putting no pressure on this tip because I actually need to remove this area. And now I'm just doing general areas in case there's any divots. I'm just trying to like work it all out in bigger swoops. I'm seeing foam building up there, which means there's a low spot there. So I'm gonna try and knock the bottom. And I'm working that bottom edge. And essentially that's your wafer, that profile. Okay, so everyone get that part of your climbing hole done. All right, you guys can take a break. So some of you, Chris, you're essentially done. Some of you are getting into almost done sanding or halfway through the sanding part. And let's look at Chris's here. So Chris has jumped ahead of us. I'm gonna come back. So Chris is what, actually both of you are ahead of us because we haven't done the jug surface yet. Um, anyway, or the grip surface, some of you it's a jug, some of it's a flat ledge and then other slopers. 
And depending on whatever you're gonna do, just work it and don't think about rounding this edge yet. That's the very last thing we do on the hold. And so this one curves, so this is the best tool for that because I can get that nice curve. Uh, one thing is you're working with this, you have to be careful that these edges, as I'm going back and forth, or depending on what motion you're doing, you can actually cut these grooves in. Like I think, oh, you're, you're actually doing pretty well. Um, it's easy to cut it in when you're doing those, those slopes. And so it's not too much. I'm putting a lot of pressure down here on my middle finger. So that way there's not much pressure on the ends of the foam. I'm just running back and forth. And then I'm looking at what kind of a shape I'm creating there. And depending on what your hold is, that's what you're going to try to replicate. At this point, that's where Chris and Brendan are. They have that nice, beautiful climbing grip surface. And then I'm going to take my medium and I'm going to run it the same pressure all the way across. And that's going to knock it down. And I'm trying to hit right in the middle and I'm going to go middle inside and then middle outside. And at that point, that's the start of the radius. And this is high density foam, so you can actually get in here pretty good and just kind of like pull down um, to feel that pressure in your finger. And then if you need to take off a little bit more, and that's something we can kind of look at as a group and pull on, um, you can knock down a little bit more. At this point, I'm just gonna run you through the rest of the process for the sake of the, for time, because we need to wrap this up, is at this point in the game, I will come in with my fingers now and then fine tune this edge, okay? So I'm gonna fine tune this edge, clean it all the way up. And now that it looks really good, there's actually all this dust on top that's like worked into the holes and maybe divots. And so it's really important at this point, you go to the air compressor or if you don't have an air compressor, like you can get like duster for your keyboard and blow it off and get everything out. And then, then you can bring it to anywhere that has lots of contrasting light. And so you don't want light hitting from every angle because it's not gonna show the shadows, which the shadows give you those imperfections. Then you can bring it up um, to that contrasting light and be like, oh, I have a dip here and you can start working that out. You could get into possibly like the fine pad and then work that out. And then from here, I generally set it down or I might jump into the next few in that series. And then you just let it sit for a few days until you can come back fresh and then reevaluate it um, with brand new eyes. And then be like, actually, does this still feel right? Or you can get feedback from you know, other people. It's like, is that, is that radius right? Do you see any divots? And then come back with another critical eye you know, at a different time. And that's really important to give like some break to it because you might really love this because you just spent like an hour doing this and like you're bought in and you're emotionally like invested in it. So you're not gonna be naturally as critical as you probably need to be. And so some time's gonna help with that, some fresh eyes. Um, you get fatigued like visually as you're doing this too, um, as you're analyzing it. So that time's really important in between what you've created and then coming back to it to have that, that final product. All right, so to wrap this up, what did you, what was surprising or what did you learn or what did you not expect from this process? Let's start with Chris. You guys can take your, your masks off. We'll just wrap this up now. It's not nearly as intimidating as I thought. So it's not as intimidating as you thought. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. But a square block of foam can be really intimidating. For sure. Yeah, like, without, without that could be scary. Or, yeah. Yep. You have to go a lot slower than I thought. You can't just curve it right from the start. You just have to go for weird ass or weird angles <laughs> and then smooth it out from there. Yeah, you can't just cut that that arch right off the bat as you, you take it in sections and let that start to appear. Yeah, so I think, yeah, for sure. Starting to figure out what tools I like and what tools like I like to use minimally. Um, I really like this for just removing bigger chunks, but as far as like finer angles, like I'd much prefer like a sanding block. I feel like I'd get a little more of the shape that I wanted. So you're saying you would probably rough it here mm -hmm. and then continue that rough work with this block yeah. before you move into that medium. Yeah, and that's good. Like 
Yeah, and so like when I talked about in the other one, like these are my videos, like I can, I can do a lot of fine tune work with this. And I think that's important for you to realize that, hey, I can jump to the sponge and get there faster and maybe better than staying with that saw. And so that's cool. And that comes with playing with a bunch of different tools. Anything stick out, Marta? Um, I was gonna say like using the tools and the orientation on the table, I'm right-handed and so like trying to figure out how to manipulate the tool in a way so I don't completely gouge it. When yeah, I the shift, like I kept turning it around and trying to figure out like the best ways to, uh -huh. um, to use, well, particularly the knife. So yeah, do you guys find that the opposite side of the hold from whatever, if you're right-handed, the left side of the hold's hard to work? Do you guys find that? It's like a little awkward because you wanna, mm -hmm. then you gotta like figure that out and rethink it, yep. Yeah, kind of the same thing, like being just opposite though, left-handed, like this side was really tough to work with. But I did like trying to fine tune it with the saw, like slowly, but then I ended up kind of getting a little divot in there. So I feel like minimally that's a good method, but then over time, like you kind of just make little imperfections in the slope. Mm -hmm. That makes it a little more difficult. Sandpaper's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for your first time, I think don't have ex expectations. And these all look like climbing holds. So first of all, this isn't like this dinky little block that you like <laughs> destroyed everything and you have like a foothold left. And with another, for some of you, another 10, 15 minutes and it's gonna look like Chris's. It might be a smaller version of what you set out to. But like Chris said, it's not as intimidating as it seems. And this is really a simple shape and to understand and jump in doesn't have to be like this big barrier to entry. If, so this is, uh, the wafers don't have any like natural texture or any like aesthetic outside of just like the basic foam. And if you want to create holds with like a sandstone texture or like some weird like washed out look or whatever it might be or these like divots, that's when the clay tools come in or a Dremel or whatever tool you can find to like carve into the foam. But the thing is you, so like right here, this one's pretty rough yet, is you need to polish this all the way to as if it's gonna be released, like almost to the point where Chris or, or my hold is, and you get it to that point because that's, you know it's gonna climb really well. And then you know that where your fingers are interacting and where your palm's hitting and all those things work and it's how you want it. And then at that point, then you can put in that either if it's just a visual texture or like an actual texture that you're touching and climbing on. And so you guys can jump ahead and you could play with that. And so like a sandstone, this is my favorite tool for a sandstone texture. I'm just gonna come in here and I kind of run horizontal lines and I just kind of carve in and then I might like divot this out. Do you want to zoom in on this? And so this would be like a sandstone texture that I'm coming in at this point, and then I want to dip that out. And then you can run these lines, and then maybe like there's some natural grooves there. I'm just doing this really fast, so I'm not taking a lot of your time. So you can kind of like get the idea. And then again, you could knock that down because it doesn't have those sharp edges. And that's like your basic, you can start to see that sandstone look taking effect. Um, same thing if you, there's like this popular thing where you're like doing all these like holes right now. Some of the hobbit holes have that. And then you have these like hard lines coming through here. I'm just kind of doing this pretty sloppily. Or here's like another tactic is you could just like dent this a bunch because the foam kind of crushes and it does some weird stuff as it crushes under pressure. And then you can come and remove, especially with like an air compressor, all those. And then you'll get this like interesting, like bumpy, like weird look to it. And so at this point, after you have your shape, you can start like manipulating all these natural textures, either with like phone tool, like weird stuff that you found around the house or the shop or with clay tools. 
you know, you can even get in here and start like scraping it. Um, there's like the sting texture has these like really hard lines in there. And then that's going to give it like a whole different texture. Um, so at this point, that's where, that's where it can like start to get fun if you want to start playing with those natural aesthetics or give it like a different look or a different um, way that it's going to like mimic outdoor rock or whatever. And so I don't know. Do you guys, we have a few more minutes. You can either just take like five more minutes for sake of time and we still have work and orders to get out today and products to make. And so you get, you can't, you don't have enough time to take your holds all the way to completion, but you can either like, if you're more interested in getting those curves right, or you want to grab some tools and like, like what I did, like play with like how you to manipulate the foam, take another like five minutes and just kind of experiment a little bit more or see what comes out.